1983 color of state and section 1985 conspiracy. Their conduct is unconstitutional. No immunity. Nobody is immune from section 1983. This is not a defense. Read the postbellum fight over section 1983. Are judges immune? No, judges lost. The other court officer uh, witnessed the incident. The incident has been repeated on, has been reported on TV. The videotape and audio tape have been shown on TV. Number 1763 had no right to block my way to pay a parking ticket and to manhandle me and to shove me into the elevator and press the down button. He is sued inter alia for abuse of person and abuse of property. If these defendants had not done wrong, they would not be afraid to be taped. If they had not broken laws, they would not be afraid to be taped. When taped and caught, they break more laws and do more cover-up. Wherefore, plaintiff sues for $23 million damages, punitive and compensatory, for the costs of this action and for the immediate discharge of number 1763. And for all other relief, just and proper, including citizens' right to record what happens in courthouses. Dated White Plains, New York, August 3rd, year 2000. I'm O'Dominee, yours in truth, Glendora. Uh, here is a copy of the parking ticket. And here is the informer papyrus to waive all the fees. Glendora is a poor person for fighting these uh, injustices in courts for so long. And here is the service by Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, Rule 4D, uh, waiving the cost of serving a summons. Okay, it's, uh, there's a few more things to do on that, the envelopes and to print it, and then it should be served today. Public Service Commission, State of New York. Uh, Stephen Shea is on vacation. Does he have an assistant? Does he have an assistant? Uh, well, Jeffrey Griosi would be the next in line, but he left for the day. He left for the day? Yeah. New York State Public Service with? Commission. Well, how about Chad Hume? I think he's here, but he's on the phone right now. Yes, he is here, but he's on the phone. Can I have him call you back? No. Uh, do you have a recorder? Is Steve Shea, uh, Yeah, but he's not there. What, right. what good does that do? Well, no, it's perfect. I mean, I can have, um, Chad call you. And, uh, Chad, uh, Chad, 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 Really? 
Yeah, the Greg method, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, that's what we learned, the Greg yeah. method. We went to Catholic school, we had the nuns. Oh, it's so funny, we do this up every day. <laughs>
sent me something. Who did that? There is no name. And it's handwritten. And what it is, is your position on having a local sponsor in the Holocaust case way back in 1995 or so. That is not a law. The commission does not make laws. The legislature makes laws. You have 15 seconds to finish recording. Now, who said that to me and why? I've asked people on the commission, including yourself, to sponsor a chat with Glendor. Everybody has refused to. So you have to stop insisting on this local sponsorship. Maximum length recorded. Re-record, press 2, 1. To approve as is, press pound. Okay, we're calling back, folks. We're calling back. Uh, and like a halfway through my list of questions and comments. Hi, I got halfway through my list. Could I have um, Tom's recorder again? Sure. Okay. Do you understand their autism? Do you understand their absenteeism? They got cat. Okay. Uh, so. thing that happened in Staten Island.
And I would like to give you an update. I do have a copy of the tape to you. And I just want to tell you really quick that Barry Marcellus and Lance Armstrong got fired the other day. Oh, no. Barry got part of a severance pay uh, and not to go to the media. And then the next day they just went in, fired Lance because of that speaker's corner. They won't admit that. And uh, the advance put in the paper that he was loyal to his boss. That's why he got fired. So that's the latest. I know Frank and Christine and the other Frank went up to see Anna on Wednesday and they taped that show. So there's still a lot of stuff going on. I'll be home later on tonight. You can give me a that's call Patricia back. Brady, Staten and Island Public Access Producers. The they went and fired the two people I who were running Public Access. The board did. And we're going into the VCAP, the VCAP, the mothership, and uh, maybe people can give their opinions towards the end of the show. Because a, a 
serious crime, a bunch of serious crimes were committed against you. And you were never served. You were never served. You were lost by the fault and you can't overturn it. And basically, if some of the people found find out, we, we found out that the cases are fixed and you can't get a Travis hearing, which you're entitled to by law. And yes, you are. You can't reverse a decision that was acquired through a crime. Oh, that's excellent. And so they, uh, so the judge or the lawyers give the paper to Norman Yellen. Which one? Uh, well, Norman Yellen was the, the guy who was providing the service. He has no, that's what I say. The, the judge or the lawyers give the papers to Norman Yellen to serve. Well, an attorney gives it to him. An attorney gives it to him. And then Norman Yellen goes out and he uh, doesn't do a thing. He throws it in the sewer and then he signs an affidavit that he served it. He forges other people's signatures that they served you. He's been doing it to, well. Well, who are these other, who are these other signatures? Uh, associates of his who are process service. And what uh, is, and he's been setting up, supposedly there's a, something going around that he's been uh, false notarizing and false signing of affidavits of service for a good number of years. Yes, for many years. 15 to 20 years. And that's what these 48 documents were that Silverman sent. Not only that, in the clerk's office, there's false affidavits sitting in the files looking to hurt people who have been hurt already and also future crimes. Say that again. In certain cases. Just a second. So these are, this is what the 48...
your hearsay. Yep. You, you have to distinguish between hearsay and then that somebody told it to you. The evidence was maintained by the State Department of the uh, City Department of Investigation. Have you seen it? Yeah. Okay. And they hand walked it, you know, a few blocks away mm -hmm. to the... Uh, yeah, I know where it is. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, okay, that's interesting. Mary Jo White. You know that, of course, Giuliani was a former U.S. Yeah. attorney. And not only that, in the 70s, they prosecuted these guys. They licensed the process servers in New York City, anywhere out of New York City. Yes, they have numbers. It's unregulated criminality. There's no licensing, yeah. Yeah. no yeah, that's true. No background checks of these people, nothing. They'll do anything and everything. That's true. They are licensed in New York City. And, and set up a litigant. So, I think... Okay, Henry, you, this is a big fight. I'm with you, 100% on it. And Goldstein's with you, Lance is with you, Harvey's with you, Lori Galgano's with you. Uh, that's terrific. Okay. This is a major crime ring and nobody's stopping it. Now, I've recorded everything, okay? okay. I'm going to play it on the TV. Mm -hmm. uh, now, as for graphics, uh, just one moment, please. Mm -hmm. Your last name is spelled, hold on. Uh, H-U-Z Zebra. H-U-S is Z-A-R. H-U-S is in Sam. Right. Let me rewrite that. H-U-S-A-R. Henry. Right. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, what will we use for a graphic? Uh, uh, hey, you probably have some affidavits there, and if you look, there's a notary stamp down on the bottom. No, I have no affidavits. No? I have no papers. Oh, okay. We could probably get you some. Give me, I'll give you my address, Box 416. Yeah. White Plains, New York. 10602. Uh -huh. Telephone 914-949-9495. This is going to go up on the screen uh, this coming Tuesday, August the 8th. Uh -huh. And it won't be cablecast probably until three weeks. I keep my programs three weeks ahead. Right. Uh, and I'm on 23 cable systems. Right, I understand it. That's good. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, I need to talk to you about something else, too, so just don't go away, all right? Hang on a second. All right. Goodbye. Uh, I'm on 23 cable systems, 
and uh, some of it goes to some cable systems, and there's other cable systems where they don't get the music because they can't make it come up. Uh, I try to work to the mixer. Pat is pretty good. He comes down and he will adjust the mixer and he'll get it and it'll be good for a while and then it, it just goes. Uh, so let's uh, see if we can solve the phantom. And why did the bunny rabbit ask to be changed into a goon within the next 24 hours? So he could be here today and goon tomorrow. Uh, that's Rich Ruggles, top uh, technician at Cablevision. He is, oh, he's terrific. And so is Rich Benefit, and so is Eileen. About Henry Husser and uh, Carmine Vasilio. You see, they got him. And they know they got him. And they're scared stiff, and they're shaking in their boots, and they're getting desperate, really desperate. He uncovers the whole chain. And I, on information and belief, uh, believe what he says about D'Amato getting those judges appointed. Barbara Jones. Hello, Cynthia. D'Amato got appointed. <laughs> Hey, it's me, 
Paul, I'm calling about uh, 4 colon 0 0 7 5 4. Okay, let me get the right menu here. Okay. Okay, what's, what's the number again? Uh, 4 colon 0 0 okay. 7 5 4. 7 5 4, okay. What's the 4 mean? That's just uh, this division. It's a division. Oh, that's mean St. Louis? Yes. Oh, I gotcha. And I'm calling uh, Paul. We have not received our summonses yet. They have to be signed by the clerk because we are pro se. So we need those summonses. We served in the complaint, but we want to have to serve them as summons. Okay. Can you give me the uh, name? 
name of the assigned judge and the case number on Glendora versus Gerald Levin? No, you need to call records. The number is 234 5020. 5020? Uh huh. Okay, oh, thank you. Can you switch me? Just a minute. Thank you. Okay, the number is that you need to directly dial it. Okay, thank you. Can you switch me to uh, just one moment, please? Uh, uh, Judy Christie? Hold on. Thank you. Oh, hi, Judy. It's Glendora. Yes, Glendora. Can I call you back? Oh, okay. You're in the middle of something right now. You're in the middle of something, right. Okay, do you call know back. what? Can you switch me to anybody who can give me the case number and the judge? Case number and judge for what? Uh, Glendora versus Gerald S. Levin. Uh, well, didn't we talk about that? I thought, uh, I thought, um, the problem was we don't have the papers. And I would ask you if you had a copy, would you mail it to me? Well, I mailed it to the chief judge. Is that the one thing that I just got a ca uh, Oh, just got to you? Yeah, I just... Okay. But it, 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 the one, what you have here, is that a copy of the original complaint, Glendora? Yes, because you lost the original. Right, but I, I wasn't sure what this was. Yeah, but I re-signed it. I signed it again. I signed the dupe. Okay, let me see. Okay, well, if this is the original, then we'll just go ahead and process Uh, just a second. 
and Charles, let me write that down. Twenty six fifty nine. Uh-huh. You don't have a number on this one. Oh yeah, there always is number, Charles. Okay. Uh, it's thirty minutes, but there's no number on it. It's your stamp, and that's that's. Oh wait, wait, it's on the spot. Twenty seven fifty eight C. Okay, twenty seven fifty eight C. And what's the date? August 9th, But I believe August 9th was played last Wednesday. Uh, but am I wrong? Uh, let me just check the log.
that is not the complaint, the thing about the court. Okay. No, that's a memorandum. Okay. I'm okay. straight now, and thanks for calling me back. Oh, well, thank you for calling me. Now I think we're on the way. I think so. Thank okay. You. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Bye. Her father-in-law 
There's a retired judge. Yes, right. Really getting uh, screwed. And uh, we, we got him all nervous, and she was gutsy, so she did a good job. Yes, but then the following Monday they were going to have a hearing. What happened then? Oh, that was just a private hearing to try and get a settlement. And what happened? Nothing. It was postponed, so she's writing letters. In fact, today she's in the... Uh, uh, court getting more of, uh, of her file, and uh, she, I told her to write a letter to the lawyer, you know, she wants to come in and make a copy of her file, he's got no right to keep her file, uh, that he, he can keep the file, but she can make copies of it. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. So, you know what that surprises me about that is I thought of it, Jonathan Littman, you know, has the administration of the courts just in New York County, and what you're talking about is in Suffolk County. And that letter had such an effect on him that he got the hearing. Yeah. I don't see how that works because I he... I thought he was just a of New York State. No, no. Trafficante has the rest of New York State. Littman has only uh, New York County. Oh, really? Yeah. So that uh, surprised me. Okay. Well, it got quick results. That's for sure. They're all on their toes. You know, that doesn't mean she's going to win. Any way they could nail her, they're going to try to. Yes, yes. Isn't it awful? Uh, okay, I, uh, you know, if you get a, a ride or anything, it should be good weather. And yeah, right. And you gave the directions in one of your flyers. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got the video incorporated in the chat with Glendora of uh, Hussar at the Suffolk County M Committee on August 1st, not the one on August 8th. I think that the one from August 1st, uh, 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 she, she gave you it to you already? Yes, and I've got it incorporated already. Terrific. And so she, uh, Lori is going to give me uh, the August 8th one too. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we're getting it in there. Oh, and, then, and then, uh, yeah, and then the, uh, Robert Goldberg is sending me, or has sent me already, his videotaping of your rally, and I'm going to hope to get that and uh, incorporate that on Tuesday. Wow. Yeah, get it in there and get it on the you team. Know, the, mafia, the mafia runs the biggest business in the country without an office. <laughs> We're getting to be that way. <laughs> without pencils and paper. The mafia doesn't, never buys office supplies. <laughs> Thank you for giving me the telephone out there. Oh, no yeah, appreciate that, all you do for us. Did I ever ask you how many teamsters it, does it take to uh, change a light bulb? Teamsters? How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> Back up. How many teamsters does it take to change a light bulb? Many. Four. You got a problem with that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right, Carl, keep Thank the courage you. flaming, keep up your good work. Okay, bye. Bye. Uh, what we call red flannel hash because you like cabbage. Yeah, but can we do that like when it gets, like in, we should, have, we should do that in September or October when it's more like New England type in the fall. It's <laughs> <laughs> more in the mood and in the winter kind of time. I figured we would do something like, uh, you know, the 29th, something like that in White Plains. Uh, oh, on the 29th is a Tuesday? Yeah, you guys come to me on the 29th. Okay, no, that's uh, editing day in Lindbrook, how about? Yeah. Uh, how about the 31st? Yeah, the 31st, uh, I have, uh, that's like the day I take the kids to the doctor and the dentist and all that stuff. I already have their appointments lined up. Oh. But uh, the 28th. The 28th of Monday? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was
problem with that? <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye bye. Thanks, bye. Right. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 
Sometime next week. Well, you see, Mr. Hostetter is a multi-millionaire because, you see, he's a cable operator. And you people keep pouring your money into their pockets. Think of how many checks they get a month. Think of it. Cablevision and NASA alone gets 450,000 checks every month. Anywhere from what? $20 up to $130? Isn't that a lot of checks to get?
We enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. So yeah. So right. And I think your paintings are beautiful. These are the triplets. Talk to me, Rocky. Talk to me, Rocky. That's the boy. Glenny's coming. Yeah, I almost had a picture of him. There he is, I think. It's Rocky's house, right across from the church. Rocky took me to his room. Yes, he has a nice studio couch and all his blankets are on top of the studio couch. And so we sat down and visited. Yes. Sweetie. This is the hutch going north. This is where David Letterman was caught going at uh, over 90 miles per hour by Harrison police. Now the hutch goes right into the Merritt Parkway, uh, into Connecticut. This is Route 287 across Westchester, turning off to White Plains. You know who, what the hutch is? The hutch is named after Ann B. Hutchinson, who uh, was a spiritually inspired woman. And uh, she had religious meetings at her house and she was so good uh, that the establishment got after her and exiled. Uh, so this is program number, public access program, chat with Glendore, 2,790. That's not far from 3,000, is it? Started in 1972, 28 years ago. Uh, we were driving up the Hutchison River Parkway 
And uh, I was telling the people uh, about the Hutchison River and the parkway, and the battery ran out. So I'll start again with you. Uh, the Hutchison River Parkway was named after Anne B. Hutchison, and she was a woman of uh, tremendous spiritual inspiration. And she had meetings at her house, and she was so good at awakening souls uh, that the establishment uh, got after her, and they expelled her. I believe she was with Roger Smith in, uh, in Rhode Island, and she ended up here in Westchester. She was born around uh, 1680 uh, or so, 1690, and she died around uh, 15, uh, 17, uh, 30 or so. She was about 51 years old when she died. The uh, river was named after Hutchison, the Hutchison River, and then the parkway that comes along the river, it starts way, way down south, way, way, way down in the Bronx, and then it goes up to the Connecticut line, and it becomes the Merritt, the Merritt Parkway, which takes people through Connecticut. And this was the highway upon which uh, David Letterman <laughs> was caught speeding at 90 miles an hour and was arrested, was summoned. And that was around about 1 o'clock at night. You see, when he used to leave NBC and uh, he used to go up the hutch, uh, he lives in uh, New Canaan, Connecticut. So he would go up the hutch and then he would go over the Merritt and then he would go up, I think it's route. 127 or 135, no, it's not 127, uh, some Connecticut small town route and go to his home in New Canaan, Connecticut. But he got caught this night and it was by the Harrison, New York police. So that's the story in the Hutchison River Parkway. It is not a very big river. It is not big at all, it's about this wide. Well, maybe twice that. In places it's very narrow. And neither is the Bronx River. And the, uh, the, high, the funny thing was that uh, when General Burgoyne was having uh, problems with George Washington, George III got very angry. And he said to Burgoyne, he says, take your ships and go up the Hutchison River. Well, of course, he had in mind the Hudson River. One could not go up the Hutchison River in a ship. Okay. Now we have some uh, Sunday footage for you. This is the cable TV uh, journal. And uh, this is for Sunday, the 6th of August. And it's the 10th day of rain. We had a good day yesterday. So I have some footage. Uh, the footage from church was really good. And now I have some audio tape to play you. And it's about this new lawsuit. I may read you some of it before we close the uh, journal for today about this new lawsuit, uh, Glendora versus the uh, New York Law Journal. And uh, uh, the person who wrote the article and the publisher and the owner and uh, the editors. And so I'll play you that uh, audio tape first. Then maybe I'll read you some of the lawsuit. I finished the public service folder. You know the great big fat folder? It has about 20 booklets in it. And I've been reading them uh, for the past two months. And uh, I finished reading them today. Now what I have to do is go through them and uh, look at my marginalia and put out a composition to the Public Service uh, Commission of the State of New York. Uh, telling them that they should update uh, these books. First of all, that they are very, very good. And it's very valuable for you, a cable TV subscriber, to know about these things. Uh, and, but they should update them. And there's considerable error and uh, anachronisms and uh, archaisms, if there is such a word, things that are archaic. And so uh, I finished it. And a note is said to that effect. Thinnis. 
Glendora has read everything in the folder given to her by the Public Service Commission at the seminar June 13, 2000, White Plains. This is about 20 books, but there was no copy of Public Service Law, Section 229, no cable operator shall limit or, produce or prohibit public access, no uh, municipality shall limit or prohibit public access, and the Public Service Commission cannot limit or prohibit public service. But I have caught them doing that, the Public Service Commission, and that just may be a lawsuit if they don't resolve it. Now all members of the Commission should go forth and do likewise. Read every one of these papers. The out of dates, the wrong labels, the anachronisms, and the archaics. Uh, should be expurgated. Now my next job on this, folks, is to go through every book that's in that great big fat folder and uh, read the marginalia, write an opening paragraph, an opener to the Public Service Commission, and then uh, write down what should be done. Now, the audio tape. Where a wolf says, let's go to the videotape. I say, let's go to the audio tape. Uh, Buchanan, they're not going to back Buchanan. And so he's going to the National Convention of the Independent Party in California. Let me start this one up for you. This is a report on Phil Goldstein. The audio tape ran out, so you can't hear the rest of the recording or the rest of the conversation. We miss Bill Goldstein. He hasn't done anything about the lawsuit because the independent party is in a, they're not going to back a, a, what's his name? And uh, they're thinking of backing Ralph Nader. Uh, Buchanan. They're not going to back Buchanan. And so he's going to the National Convention of the Independent Party in California next week, he and Frank McGee. So it was too bad, and you missed his laughter over the joke of the day. He's a good audience. Hi, Paul. It's Franklin and Glendora, and Franklin wishes to thank you for the check, and it came through just fine. And today's joke is, why did the bunny rabbit ask to be changed into a goon within the next 24 hours? So you could be here today and goon tomorrow. Take care. That's in Iowa, and that's very nice, a happy occasion. Ray Jameson. Ray Jameson. Bayshore. Bayshore. Combating tyranny in America starts early. Please leave your message after the tone. It's a constant thing. May God bless America. And remember, pray to end abortion. This is Glendora, 914-949-9495. Uh, you are doing great things out there in Suffolk County. Uh, you are fighting for right, and you are fighting to save America. And here's today's joke. Why did the bunny rabbit ask to be changed into a goon within the next 24 hours? So you could be here today and goon tomorrow. This is Hickey. Deputy Commissioner White Plains Police. He won't take my telephone calls. I don't know what he's afraid of. Now why is he afraid of Glendora, Hickey? He's afraid of being sued, I guess, for making people make out a form when they want to pick it on the sidewalk. But anyway, he's not answering now. So we've done the hour calls, and we've done the day calls. We did them from Monday because we didn't have a chance. We did them for Wednesday. Tuesday we can't telephone because we edit it all day and chat with one door. We did Thursday's day calls. We did Friday's day calls. That's good. And we've done the month calls. There's a bunch of July calls, August calls. My goodness, they're July and here it is August. And we do 10 of those a day. Next is the eight and a half by eleven calls. Hey, Glendora, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good, 
Don't forget to watch me tonight at 10. No, I will. Uh, the front door, the driver's uh, front door won't lock. Yeah, probably, I never looked at that door, but you probably need an actuator there also. Well, it was... We didn't touch that door open door. Oh, I know that, but it, it was, it was locked. Just, it probably just went. It was, it was locking, it was unlocking and unlocking before we did the others. Well, one has, one has to do with the other. Bring them by, I'll take a look at it for you. Maybe I can see something, I'll try to fix it for you. Okay. Next time you're in the neighborhood, come by and, uh... Don't you know what off. time you're in? Stephen Keller. I'm here every afternoon, except Thursdays. Oh, he lives in Long Island. I have a feeling it's Bronx. the actuator, because, um... Don't know, bring them by, we'll look at it for you, okay? Whatever. Yeah, see, I can't get it to lock. Even when I uh, do it manually, I can't get it to lock. Probably the actuator, Glendora. Probably what? That's my luck, you know? Okay. Alright. Bring it by, we'll look at it for her, we'll tell you what your problem is. Okay, I'll have to plan it, Steve. Okay, let me know when, okay? Okay. Take care, so I'll look for you tonight. Yeah, why did the bunny rabbit ask to be changed into a goon within the next 24 hours? Why? So he could be here today and doing tomorrow. Very good. Okay, Steve. Bye. Bye. Chats with Glendora. Cats with Glendora. Cats with Glendora. Hi, you reached 
in prayer the many who are sick of our church and community. Uh, this being Easter Sunday, I can't read it without laughing. This being Easter Sunday, we ask Mrs. Lewis to come forward and lay an egg on the altar. I think I found it. Here comes the sneeze. This is in church on Sunday this morning. That's the sneeze. That was a trustee who was sneezing. Uh, do you remember the vacuum cleaner that uh, Eureka gave me? Uh, they gave us, we went and bought a nice vacuum cleaner and it was wonderful, but then all of a sudden it stopped working. And so uh, Eureka gave us another one, a new one, and gave us even a fancier model and it's terrific. But we wanted to find a happy home for the first one, the defective one. And Tony and Usher at church, he found out that the reason the uh, Eureka vacuum cleaner wasn't working was because a belt was broken. And so uh, weeks and weeks went by and I kept asking uh, Tony to go get a belt. And he said, oh, I know somebody over in Tuckahoe, they have lots of those things. But he never went over and he never got it. So the vacuum cleaner was just hanging around and I wanted it into somebody's hands uh, to whom it would be very useful. Now, not a year later. And uh, because a year later it will be antiquated. There will be new models out. So uh, I told Tony last Sunday, I said, if you don't go to Yonkers and uh, if you don't go to Tuckahoe and get the belts, I'm going to go to Yonkers and get them. Because I called up the factory, uh, the president's office, and they said, go get the belts in Yonkers. So Franklin did. And so he brought the belts to church this Sunday and Tony uh, said that he would give the vacuum back and he put it in the trunk of our car. So what do I do now? Do you want the vacuum? I don't know if you can get a hold of me in time to, uh, to do that. But I think I'm going to call either Big Brother or Big Sister or take it to Salvation Army because it's a brand new vacuum and it's so nice. All right, so here's some more news from church. Uh, this is Paul. Paul is a lawyer. He works for Time Warner. He, uh, somebody brought a libel suit against Time Warner and he went to the Third Circuit in Philadelphia and he argued it. Uh, he and some other lawyers. And I asked him today if he'd heard about the lawsuit. And my question to him was about the libel suit. If they had got a decision from the three judges on the Third Circuit in Philadelphia. He said no. And we remarked on how long it is. And uh, he says, well, did you get one? I says, well, mine went in a month before yours did. And uh, well, I made a motion to the Philadelphia court. And I said, you know, stop wasting time. Uh, stop giving excuses. You're there to do a job. This is a motion that you get down to business and you make a ruling on my case. Well, naturally, they dismissed the appeal. But they had no grounds to do that. So I petitioned for an argument on bunk, and I haven't heard from that. And that was at least two months ago. They're terrible, these U.S. courts of appeal. Well, then I asked Paul, why would a uh, case about libel end up in the federal court? Why wouldn't it be in a state court? Because it's the state that have the laws on libel. And this is his argument. Pennsylvania has its own law. And it didn't have the actual malice standard in it. New York Times v. Sullivan comes down. New York Times versus Sullivan comes down. 
That's a very famous lawsuit. A public figure cannot recover damages for libel unless he demonstrates falsity or reckless regard for the truth. Are they allowed to recover under the same standard that they would in federal court? And the answer to that is no. It's got to be the same standard. Constitutional law overrides whatever the state law of Pennsylvania is. The answer is no. The Constitution overrides. No, the Constitution overrides whatever the law is in Pennsylvania. Supremacy cause. Glendora says, is that because of Sullivan versus New York Times? Paul says, yes. The standard has to apply in state court as well as in federal court. It has to be the same standard across the board. The 14th Amendment, folks, is uh, uh, that the states, that people will have equal protection of the law. 14th Amendment, equal protection of the law.
non-state actors? Federal Constitution has to be applied across the board. Uh, on Friday, the congregation is invited to uh, attend this tragedy. <laughs> now the choir, read the choir. Read the choir room. <laughs> what was the tenth one, the choir? I just heard somebody try and start a car and I went out to give him a boost. But now I can't find him. Okay. Uh, the one about the choir. This camera can see better than I can. And this is Ginny Cat. See, the camera doesn't like that light. It wants to shoot in low light. Low light. Uh, eight new choir robes are urgently needed due to the addition of several new members and the <laughs> deterioration of some older ones. <laughs> Then I showed uh, fellow congregant lawyer Paul uh, the uh, statements in the New York Law Journal about Glendora. He read them and he said, you're in the press. And then I said, The standard for libel is How many lawsuits have you filed? And I said, where? And uh, I told him 52 in the Second Circuit. Uh, yeah, it might be an argument that we 
second circuit alone would be 52. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. I mean, I was just a minute on the podium. I mean, I could have been a good, good, good. And I'm going to just want to put it for you. I wish the people in my congregation wouldn't talk so loudly. Uh, Paul says a limited purpose. They have something called limited purpose public figure. What? Limited purpose public figure. Oh, okay. Well, good. I'm glad I'm not a public figure for the for the argument here. Yeah, but uh, there is something called a limited purpose public figure, which applies to uh, someone who's not as ordinarily a public figure, which he would not be. I'm a public figure because of the cable TV. Yeah, yeah. Being on 26 systems. Well, that's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah, this one's going to be. Yeah, I'm not aware of that. If that's true, then you probably are a public figure. Yeah. That's pretty wide exposure. Well, the standard that is that the standard 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 is I like it. Well, that's a completely different issue, right? And when Gondor is practicing law, Gondor is not practicing law, yeah. but that is a rumor by Cablevision. Did they call me up and say, uh, you know, is this true? Yeah. Can this be uh, documented? Can it be uh, substantiated? You see, and they never call me. Well, if you file 52 lawsuits, so that's, that's a lot of lawsuits, you know? Well, that's, well, that's okay, but it's, it's practicing, giving legal advice. Without a license. Have you, uh, were these lawsuits brought individually by you? Uh, yes. This particular lawsuit that they were class action? No, they, I brought them as class action, but they were never certified. Yeah. Uh, but this particular lawsuit, I'm not even the lead plaintiff. Lori Galgano is the lead plaintiff. I am only a plaintiff. This is the one against the Cablevision public access kit. Right. Where Cablevision said such things as in the sole and absolute discretion of Cablevision. Right. And so, by the way, Cablevision completely backed down on this. It's gone. It's dead. The public access kit. We made such a, uh, a protest about it. And I sued him in Missouri, and Hill Gartner wrote them and said that I'm representing 30 cable uh, public access producers, and you have seriously infringed on their rights. And uh, it was an ultimatum that uh, they had to answer by uh, June 15th, or, and by June 19th, they withdrew it. Now, the Public Service Commission came down on them very hard, too. Mm -hmm. So uh, that are, uh, those are things that will have to be incorporated in the lawsuit. And in a few minutes, maybe I'll have a little time to read you that lawsuit. Maybe you'll have a little time to listen. Case Library is a terrible place. I went over there to get a book. I was told about it Saturday. And I made extensive trip and delayed all my work. And I went over to Pace Library. Uh, to see this book, and the reference librarian wasn't there when I was told he would be there, and he's somebody I know, and these two uh, stooges uh, at the front desk uh, would not let me see the book unless I paid $25 for it. Now you see, I've told you how greedy lawyers are. Look how greedy
people.